Hi gang, in this video I'll make a new electrolytic capacitor, one that has a much higher capacitance than the one in my How to Make an Electrolytic Capacitor video. I'll put an annotation to that video at the end of this one, as well as a link in this video's description. I first want to know if kitchen aluminum foil would work for the capacitor plates. In my other video I used aluminum from a soda can, which I was able to sand and wash with soap and hot water. I can't do that with aluminum foil. And notice that since I couldn't clean them, I was careful not to touch the foils. And using the same forming technique as described in my How to Make an Electrolytic Capacitor video, it worked. I had a 37 microfarad capacitor, and it worked with my blinking light circuit. So the next step was to make this one. I started by preparing some more distilled water and baking soda solution. Again, see my How to Make an Electrolytic Capacitor video for details. Next, I prepared the two aluminum foil plates. Okay, so I have two pieces of foil here, 28 and a half inches long by three and a half inches wide. And each one has an extra tab right here um, that's about two inches wide. Um, this is just for the contact. And here's the uh, paper towel that's going to be used as a separator between the plates. Not the insulator. I don't want an insulator between the plates. I want the electrolyte to conduct through this. Um, so I just need to make this long enough. Work. Okay. So I need two of those. What I've done is I've taken this foil here and I've bent up the edges to make a sort of a tray so I don't make a mess. And then I'm just unfolding one of my paper towels here and I'm going to start wetting it. So this is the um, baking soda and water or sodium bicarbonate. I'll take my first foil plate. And now the tricky part. Actually, here's an idea. Let's see if I can do this. Since that works so well, I'm going to put the next one right on top of that one. Now the tab for this plate is over here. The tab for the other plate is going to be the other side end. Now to roll it, I have this piece of plastic tubing, just whatever, and I'm going to put it down and try to roll it around that. Okay, more or less. And the plates at the top here are also separated. So one's positive, one's negative. I'll choose which later. There we go, the uh, ever-present, ever-handy tie straps, or tie wraps, or whatever you call them. Let's put them on there loosely. Okay, now I can put it in the jar. And then, just to make sure that there's um, um, electrolyte inside there, I don't want it to drip out or anything, or it's also going to dehydrate a bit, so... And voila! Next it was time to form the aluminum oxide layer on what will be the positive plate. Okay, I'll just do it like I did in the first video, exactly the same. I'll start on a 10 amp scale. And I'll connect the um, positive from my 9 volt adapter positive of the meter and the negative continuing from there to what I'm calling the positive of my electrolytic capacitor. Okay. 
and the negative of the power supply goes to the negative of the capacitor. All right. Plug it in. And we're at 1.3 amps. So it's a good thing I started on the 10 amp scale. That was too big for my 200 milliamp scale. So 900 milliamps and dropping. So it's now forming. The outer plate will be a positive for my electrolytic capacitor and the inner plate will be the negative. Okay, we're below 200 milliamps. So I'm going to unplug it and switch to the 200 milliamp scale so I get more accuracy. And continue. So we're 131 milliamps and dropping. So I'll leave it there for an hour or so. And once the forming was done, it was time to try it out. Here's my setup for charging it for doing tests. I've got my power supply over here, my 9 volt adapter. I've got my capacitor and then my meter for measuring the voltage. So first thing I'll do is hook it up to the volt meter. Okay, so the capacitor is hooked up there. And next I'm going to hook up to the power supply. I'll just connect them in parallel. So the negative power supply goes to the negative capacitor and to the negative probe of the meter. And the positive of the power supply goes to the positive of the capacitor, which is also the positive probe of the meter. Put it on the voltage scale and plug it in. So I'll let it charge for a little bit. Should be good enough. So once it's charged, I'm going to quickly disconnect. That way the capacitor doesn't have time to drain anywhere. And then I'll disconnect the power supply. And I'm ready for a test. First test I'll do involves this small little LED right here and see if I can get it to light up. So my capacitor is all charged. I'll just go in closer and turn out the lights. Okay, so there's the LED right there. I'm just going to connect up the uh, negative of the charged capacitor. Then I'll just tap the positive. And you can see it works fairly well. Okay, so this time I have a 1.5 volt light bulb. My capacitor is charged again, so I will connect up the negative. And then tap the positive. There you go, got a nice bit of light there. User RealFlow100 was saying he's having problems getting his speaker to make a clicking sound whenever he connected it to his homemade capacitor. And I suggested maybe his problem was he didn't have enough capacitance. So I'm going to connect it up here to my charge capacitor. Connect up the negative. Okay, now listen what happens when I just touch the positive. So you get a little speaker sound there. And uh, that took the main charge out of the capacitor, so I'll click it again. So there's still some charge. And there we go, pretty much nothing left. And then, of course, to measure the capacitance, I'll put it on the capacitance scale of my meter. Let it settle for a bit. And we see it's around the mid 500s microfarads, so 560s or something. If you let this capacitor sit for a few days and then measure the capacitance, you'll find it's super high, around 4 millifarads. It's not really though. The electrolyte heals the oxide layer, including putting a layer on the negative plate. But that layer is not supposed to be on the negative plate. Somehow manufactured capacitors avoid that. So when you connect the capacitor to a power supply again, it removes the oxide layer from the negative plate and you're back to the proper capacitance around 580 microfarads. I actually first discovered this with my aluminum plate in a glass electrolytic capacitor. After sitting for a few days, its capacitance was around 544 microfarads. Then, when I connected it to power, I could see a cloud of oxide flying off the negative plate, as you see here. And when I measured the capacitance again, it was back to the normal 60 microfarad range. Well, thanks for watching. Check out my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org, for more videos like this. That includes a how to make an electrolytic capacitor video I kept mentioning. Also one on how to make capacitors in general, including non-polarized ones. And for variety, one about how to make a crystal radio from scratch. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, or leave a question or a comment below. See you in a bit.